Clementine Wamaria, The Girl Who Smiled Beads, A Story of War and What Comes After. Welcome to the compelling story of The Girl Who Smiled Beads, A Story of War and What Comes After by Clementine Wamaria. This book provides an introspective look into Wamaria's life as a Rwandan genocide survivor, and eventually becoming a human rights advocate. With vivid details, Clementine and her co-author, Elizabeth Weil, discuss the harrowing experiences of fleeing from home, seeking refuge, and rebuilding life in the face of adversity. The central themes of this autobiography expand beyond the refugee crisis and delve into the immense challenges posed by survival and the complexities of human nature in dire circumstances. As you explore this book's summary, be prepared to feel empathy, anger, sorrow, and ultimately, hope. A Survivor's Journey Clementine Wamaria recounts her experience of surviving the Rwandan genocide in her personal memoir co-written by Elizabeth Weil. Her middle-class home turned into a war zone when she was six years old. Clementine and her older sister Claire escaped to eventually become refugees living in a Red Cross refugee camp. The book explores human nature amid the pressures of war, poverty, and homelessness. Despite the horrors and challenges faced, Wamaria is a human rights advocate and public speaker today, emphasizing the importance of empathy in connection. Wamaria's Harrowing Journey Wamaria's life takes a dramatic turn when war erupts in Zaire, forcing her to flee her village with her sister and baby niece. The trio faces numerous challenges, from a sinking boat to a lack of resources in new villages. Eventually, they end up in Durban, South Africa, where they encounter television personality Oprah Winfrey. They stay there until Rob, who wants to marry Claire, tells them they have to travel to Rwanda to find their parents. Despite the risks involved, they set out for Rwanda. Wamaria's life changes drastically when war disrupts the peace in her village. She, her sister Claire, and Claire's baby daughter Mariette are among the people forced to leave their homes. Along the way, they encounter Rob, a care worker from Zaire who wants to marry Claire. Rob takes them to his home village, where they receive a warm welcome. However, when the village loses electricity and its water system, Wamaria, Claire, and Mariette have to flee once again. They get on a boat that starts to sink, and people throw their prized possessions into the water to stay afloat. Eventually, they reach Durban, where Oprah Winfrey becomes a source of comfort for Wamaria. However, their stay is cut short when Rob tells them they have to go to Rwanda to find their parents. Despite the dangers involved, they take the risk and set out for Rwanda. From War Zone to the United States Clementine Wamaria travels from Zaire to the United States with two other adults and Mariette, a young girl. Wamaria and her companion struggle to find food and survive in the war-torn Zaire. They eventually move to a slum in Lusaka, Zambia, where they meet a UN representative. Claire applies for a micro-loan which leads to an opportunity to apply for immigration to the United States. They accept and fly to Chicago. A Journey of Hope Wamaria, a refugee, was taken in by a church member in America where she experienced a better life and helped care for the family. She didn't share her newfound comfort with her sister until they reunited their family in the U.S. This experience taught Wamaria the difference between a story and experience, the latter being a guide to true existence. The Power of Letting Go In her essay-winning recount, Wamaria shares her painful experience of being separated from her family during the war. She and her sister later appeared on Oprah Winfrey's show, where they reunited with their family. The reality of their reunion, however, was different from what they had hoped for. Wamaria struggled to channel her anger and pain until she gave away 100 braided bead bracelets, each representing something painful or destructive that she had let go of. This act of letting go empowered her to overcome her struggles and ultimately led to her acceptance at Yale. The Girl Who Smiled Beads At a South African high school event, Wamaria and Claire discussed a memory from Wamaria's childhood about the girl who smiled beads. 
Wamariya found power in the image of the strong goddess that the girl embodied, counter to the themes of war and rape in her past. She explored her memories and the writings of W. G. Siebold, who wrote about post-World War II Germany's mass amnesia. Wamariya's appointment to the board of the U.S. National Holocaust Memorial Museum brought her to Rwanda on the 20th anniversary of the genocidal conflict. She grappled with the country's campaign of forgiveness and the implications of forgiving unforgivable acts. Finding Healing Through Storytelling After experiencing different traumas, Wamaria and her mother struggled to understand each other. Wamaria took a trip to Europe with her mom and boyfriend but found it difficult to connect. She then embarked on a journey to tell her own story and find healing. A Personal Journey of Pain and Triumph in this collaboration between journalist Elizabeth Weil and survivor Clementine Wamaria, the story details Wamaria's harrowing journey as a refugee. With intimate psychological and spiritual insights, Wamaria narrates her determination to keep her soul alive in the face of horror. Anyone interested in global refugee crises and contemporary African history ought to read her unforgettable story. Wamaria's pain and gratitude make her tale deeply felt and resonate long after the last page. This book gives a vivid and unforgettable human face to grim refugee statistics. In conclusion, The Girl Who Smiled Beads is an unforgettable memoir that emphasizes the depths of human resilience and the capacity to overcome great adversity. Clementine Wamaria, along with her sister Claire, survived the Rwandan genocide and embarked on a long journey that eventually led them to the United States, where they were able to rebuild their lives and achieve significant milestones. The book's primary message is about harnessing the power of one's own narrative to create meaningful change and adapt to the realities left in the wake of tragedy. This story serves as an empathetic and profound reminder of the human faces and stories behind global refugee crises shining a light on the strength and determination of those affected by such events.